Today, I'm going to show you how to create a pointillism image using any existing photo or image you might have. I'm going to show you three ways that you can do it. These are going to be in order of increasing complexity. The first way is super fast. The second way is not too much harder, just using a few more nodes. But the third way is quite a bit harder uh, to create and even understand because it's using a bunch of math nodes. Now, I am not a math guy. I used to think I was when I was younger because I was good at simple math, but I've since encountered a lot of complex, high-level math that just makes my brain hurt. So for that reason, I'm going to be breaking this down really simply because otherwise it just doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. It just looks like a web of operations. But while it may look complex uh, when viewed as a whole, when broken down, the individual parts are relatively simple, and I think most people will be able to understand it. A special thank you as well to my Gumroad and Patreon supporters. If you like what I do, then these are good ways to support me creating new content. Setup for this tutorial is going to be really easy. I'm just going to delete that uh, cube, bring in a plane, change this whole middle area to the shader editor, put that material that was on our cube onto our plane, hit N to get rid of that shelf on the right, and I'm going to size this up a bit and turn this into the 3D viewport. Zoom in a bit and hold down Z, move your mouse up, and you'll be in rendered mode. And uh, we're all set up for the first texture here. I've got an image of William Blake that I downloaded. And you can just drag that in from a folder, and it'll form an image texture automatically. I'm going to hit Control T, which is a Node Wrangler shortcut, and that automatically adds this texture coordinate and mapping node, and I'm plugged into the UV for this guy here. He does look a little stretched horizontally, so I'm just going to quickly adjust this X scale just by bringing it to 1.1. I could fine tune it more, but I'm not going to worry about it. It's not really the purpose of this tutorial. I'm just going to create a few incisions by holding down Shift and right clicking and dragging through those nodes. It just creates a little reroute point, helps keep things more readable. I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture and bring that in. And uh, why don't we also bring in a mapping node? Just place it right before here. We'll run this uh, object. Instead of UV, we'll run object into the vector. And that's going to go into the vector here as well. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to change the scale to 50 and the randomness to 0. So we can see a bunch of small black dots. And then on this mapping node, I'm going to adjust the rotation on the Z to 45. So now we have a whole bunch of uh, diagonal lined up dots there. I'm going to bring in a math node and leave it set on add. Just place it on the end of that Voronoi and then feed this image texture into the bottom there. You can already see some uh, interesting gradient stuff happening here. The last step is to duplicate this math node, change it to greater than, and then we can fine tune this number here. I found I liked the look of 0.72, and that kind of made the background all black, and this area completely white. It's kind of cool though, you know, because of this greater than at the threshold, it's just black or white, and nothing in between. For things we could change around, you know, for instance, we could change the scale on this uh, mapping node here. This looks kind of interesting. If you zoom in, you see a bunch of vertical dots there, and horizontal dots as well where these are still vertical dots, but they're just so close together they look like larger horizontal dots, kind of like these shapes right here. Uh, we could also change this Voronoi texture, maybe changing it to F2 instead, looks quite different. Euclidean, we could change to Manhattan, uh, you know, Chebyshev or Minkowski. Or we could change the scale here, you know, make it really large, looks so much more detailed. Or the randomness as well, change that around. Another thing we could do is instead of a greater than node, why don't we just duplicate that with Control Shift D so we kind of have an alternate path here. And I'm going to change this to subtract. And this is going to feed into a color ramp. I'm going to change the interpolation to constant. And let's bring this down here. In fact, actually, let's bring that to the top. And we'll just bring two more flags in here as well. So uh, it's going to be black at the bottom and then kind of a dark bluish color for shadows. Maybe something like that. And then it's going to be white right here. So I'll just swap the white with the black. And then at the top, it's going to be kind of a yellowish color for, you know, kind of creamy, kind of like a flesh tone there. Now we can adjust these sliders to get different effects. So you can pull the blue down, the white down, and the yellow down. Let's zoom in so we can see what's going on a bit better as well. You can see the black, the blue, the white, and the yellow. And if we drag this around, we can see how it affects these shapes. I'm going to duplicate this here and just move it to the side. 
and uh, let's grab this here, make a new texture. And all I'm going to delete is this mapping node and Flournoy texture. I'll leave the rest of this the same for now. I'm going to bring in a mapping node and feed the object output of the texture coordinate into that vector there. And then I'm going to bring in a wave texture and place it right after there. I'm going to make an incision right before the mapping node with uh, holding down shift and right clicking and dragging through. And then grab this mapping and wave texture and control shift D, both of those guys, so they remain attached to this reroute point. I'm going to bring in a mix RGB, place it right here, and feed this bottom one into color 2, and the top one is going into color 1. Then I'm going to grab the Z on this top mapping node and change this to 45 degrees. And this bottom one, I'm going to change to negative 45 degrees. I'm going to bring in a value node, place it right here, change this to 15, and I'm going to plug it into the scale on both of these wave nodes so that they remain in sync with each other. For this mix RGB, I'm going to change this to multiply and change the factor to 1. We could also use a regular math multiply here, but uh, I like this mix RGB because I'm going to change it around in a bit and do some more options that you don't really have access to with a regular math multiply node. I'm going to move all this stuff over a little bit and feed this mix RGB into the add that I set up before. And then let's look at this greater than output. You may want to adjust this a little bit. I had it actually quite high. I had it at 1.02. Once again, you can adjust the value here, and this will increase the uh, scale of the pointillism technique. You can bring it quite high if you want. I'm going to bring this back down to 15. Another thing you can do that's kind of cool is with this multiply, you can drag it down to zero. And then you have this kind of horizontal uh, effect there. You can swi switch these around and get it in the other direction as well. Now it's uh, the different diagonal. And you can do the same thing. Plugging it into here gives a very interesting effect. Uh, you probably want to adjust these a little bit. But same kind of thing. If you zoom in, you can see the gradient at work there. I'm going to duplicate this again. And I'll just move it to the side. And this is going to be our third texture now. I'm just going to create a new material so that we don't uh, overwrite this one here when we're making some changes. And I'm going to delete all of these nodes here. Let's just make some more room. This is going to be a uh, little more nodes than the last two setups. I'm going to break this setup into two parts. And let's just look at the two parts individually, see if we can kind of suss out what exactly is going on here. Uh, if you're like me, you might find this pretty confusing to look at without breaking it down. So this is how I make it a little easier to understand what's happening. The first thing I noticed from this setup is the X output of this separate XYZ goes right into this X input of the combined XYZ. Same with the Z right here. So those two values actually are going to be remaining the same. The only thing that changes is this Y value right here. I can also see that the pattern is coming out of the X output here of the separate XYZ. So why don't I throw up some uh, X values? We'll just kind of trace them through all these nodes and see what happens to them. So this is the range I'm going to choose here from negative 5 to 5. The first thing we're going to do is add 2. That's a pretty simple operation. It just moves everything up by 2. The next thing we're doing is multiplying by 0.5. You can see some of the numbers are between the whole numbers. and Some of them land right on. You might be asking why we didn't just divide by 2. Multiplication is a much faster process than division, so it's preferable to do it this way. Next up we have a round node, and that just rounds the number to the nearest whole number. So negative 1.5 is negative 2. We have negative 1, negative 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, etc. This next step is a little different. We're taking this whole string we've created at the top, and we're adding the original y value. So I found it best to just leave y as a variable for now. You know, if y is negative, we're subtracting 2 from that value y. Uh, this is just y because we're not doing anything to it, uh, y plus 1, all the way down to y plus 4. So I've got a little formula that's not really a formula because it's got two y's that are different values. I probably should have just called them different things, but uh, I guess this is new y here, and this is old y. So old y is the one coming out of this separate xyz, and new y is the one uh, going into this combined xyz. Basically, we're just remapping the y values here. So new y equals old y plus a rounded version of half of x plus 2. So um, what this is saying to me is that uh, 
this uh, new y value is going to depend on the x value. Basically, the lower the x value is, the lower the y value is going to be as well. It's just going to be shifting down, basically. But the x values are going to be staying the same. Let's take a look at that in Blender. I've recreated that little setup here. You know, separate x, y, z, add to, multiply by 5, round, and add that y value. And that's going into the y right here. And we could bring in another separate x, y, z, put it here, and look at the y output. But it's actually the same as just looking at this add as well. I'm going to quickly go through these operations. So we've got the x output from the separate x, y, z. Basically, this is uh, you know the x axis right here. And this is negative 1. Everything 0 or negative is black. This is 0 right here. And this is 1, which is white. And then this is 0.5, you know, middle gray, 0.25, dark gray, etc. So if we take our separate x, y, z, look at the x output, we add 2. Uh, now, basically, everything's white because everything's at least 1 or above. You know, it used to be negative 1, 0, 1. So negative 1 plus 2 is now 1. This is now 2. And this is now 3. We can actually see that if we duplicate one of these math nodes, place it here, and I'll just change this to greater than. So if we set this to 1, you know, we can see as we move this up slowly, uh, that's the border right there. That's 1. This is 2 right here, and this is 3. So after adding 2, we're going to multiply by 0.5. Let's take a look at that. It is a slight gradient. It's pretty hard to see. Basically, it's going from 0.5 to 1 to 1 1.5 because it was 1, 2, 3 before. We're just halving it. So uh, we can see that if we put the greater than on there, you know, there's 0.5 right there. There's 1. And there's 1 1.5. Next step is rounding. So that's basically just going to go, you know, 0 0.5 is now 1. This is now 1. And 1 1.5 is now 2. And then finally, we're going to add y 2x. So um, yeah, it's a little trickier to visualize that. Let's take a look. So I was trying to make sense of this, and I brought in another math node, and I set it to greater than to try and see what was happening. You know, I thought that something would be happening down here because as x is lower, um, you know, y is supposed to be going up, you know, or so I thought from my formula. Then I realized I'm really only seeing a small set of the picture here just coming from objects. So uh, I just added a mapping node before that separate x, y, z. And if you set the x and the y values to something higher, you know, even 5, it's just to show you this pattern here, this stepped down pattern. And if you just look at the add there, it's gradients. So it's starting at 0 there, going down negative value, and up in a positive direction there. So go ahead and copy the setup that I've got here. This is going to be a, the first half of our chain. And don't worry about this stuff down here. This is just that uh, image texture I had of William Blake. Now let's take a look at the second half of this setup. So uh, coming from the second separate XYZ node, we can see this time that only Z remains unchanged, and both X and Y go through a transformation. And this time, too, they don't mix with each other. So the formulas are going to be a little bit straightforward. And for that reason, I basically set up, you know, if x or y is, and then I've got a range here, so this can be substituted for either variable this time. First operation is pretty straightforward. We're just adding 1 to everything, so everything's moving up 1 unit. Next, we're performing an absolute value operation, so everything is now positive or 0, and basically the 0 has just been offset by 1 unit. You know, that's another way to think about it. Next thing we're going to do is modulo 2, and modulo is kind of like division. Uh, but it's a little different. We're just interested in the remainder. We're not interested in how many times 2 goes into 4 or anything like that. So basically, 4 mod 2, we go, you know, 2 goes into 4 2 times, and there's a remainder of 0. That's our answer. So 0 uh, for 4 mod 2. 3 mod 2, it just goes in one time, and then there's a remainder of 1. So then 2 is 0, 1 is 0. Basically, it gives us a pattern of alternating zeros and 1s and it can be really useful to create a tileable pattern this way. These last two steps actually serve a pretty important purpose, the subtract 1 and absolute value. Uh, basically, they're going to swap the positions of the 1s and zeros. So uh, the first step, subtract 1, 0 becomes negative 1, and 1 becomes 0. So that's the same for all of those values. 
and then absolute value switches everything to positive. So effectively, you know, all these zeros have become ones, and all these ones have become zeros. So the formula is that I've come up with look like this here: uh, new value is equal to the absolute value of old value plus one, and then you mod that by two, subtract one, and then take the absolute value of everything, you know, everything in these brackets here. Uh, so hopefully that's helpful to you. It was helpful for me to figure this all out and write it all out, try and make sense of it. But we're also going to do it in Blender, so that might also help you visualize this. Let's take a look at this now in Blender. I'm going to start by bringing in a math node and plug it into the output, uh, the X output on the separate X, Y, Z. So this is going to be add one. Basically we had, you know, zero, one, zero. So now it is one, or sorry, me, zero, one, two. Basically adding one to all of the X values there. The second thing we're doing is we're going absolute value. So this didn't change anything on our graph because everything was positive or zero anyways. But if we were to scale this up, we can see that everything that was negative on the left side is now positive there. So the next step is another math node. I don't know why I just searched for one. I could have just duplicated it there. But we're going to go modulo. So let's bring in modulo. And it's going to be modulo 2. It's tough to see what's going on because I actually removed that mapping node at the beginning here. So I'm just going to reintroduce it here and set both of these to 5 again. And now we can see a bit better what's going on. I'm just going to go back to this absolute value. And this is actually our zero point right here because everything has been scaled up by five. Um, you know, our old zero point was way at the end, but everything's been crunched into the center a bit more. And then this modulo is basically creating these repetitive tile patterns that starts at zero here. It goes zero to one and then zero to one and then zero to one. And it goes the same way in the negative direction as well. You know, zero to one zero to one and then it would keep going as well if our pattern was bigger the next step is another math notes and for some reason i'm still searching for them instead of just duplicating them but uh, basically we're going to go subtract one from everything and then the last one i'm not going to search i'm going to just duplicate this absolute value and place it here now we can see uh, the true uh, full picture of what's going on here we've now made it everything kind of uh, nice and consistent, you know, and now it's just going zero to one. No, that was the other way around. Black is zero, zero to one to zero, zero to one to zero. So now it's a nice uh, symmetrical pattern there. Let's do the same thing with the Y. I'm not going to bother remaking this stuff here. I'm just going to duplicate it. I'll plug Y into that first one. Let's take a look at what's happening with the Y as well. We can see basically each row is offset um, by half of the pattern. So that's kind of cool. That's what we did with this first step and the second step combined. And now we're going to combine it into a combined X, Y, Z. This is going to go into the Y. This is going to go into the X. And this is going to go into the Z, although it doesn't really do anything because uh, we're not really working with the Z anyways. All right, we're ready for our last step here. Believe it or not, uh, just a gradient texture. I'm just going to place it right here and change this to spherical. And there we go. We've got our tiled spherical pattern there. Now I'm going to add this into the add node that I created a while back for the other texture. And let's see what it looks like with the grade event. You know, obviously our pattern needs to be a little bit bigger here. Let's increase this to something like 100. Not bad. Maybe even a little higher. 200. That looks really good. Uh, I'm happy with the output there. <clears throat> we could also look at it through this color ramp here and adjust it a little bit so we get different highlights. Another thing we could do is change this gradient texture here. Maybe something like linear. Uh, looks pretty interesting. It's kind of like that wave texture effect we had in the second texture I set up. Another thing we could do too is just create a custom shape. You know, if you recall in the first tutorial I did, um, you know, we made those diamond shapes. Why don't I just quickly make that shape so it's two absolute values x and y and then just add them together okay that's not it's supposed to go there all right so this is a bunch of little diamond shapes there still offset but i'm just going to plug this in instead of that gradient texture 
There we go. Probably want to fix it a little bit. Doesn't look quite right. You know, just change it around. But same kind of thing. You know, now we've just got these interesting little diamonds or triangles or whatever. It's uh, diamonds because we're kind of going over the threshold there. You can see now it's just a whole bunch of, or it was triangles. Anyways, uh, you can kind of see the effect that it's doing. It's just a different thing. But uh, you can see how versatile this setup is because it's basically creating an entirely new coordinate system, which you can then add any custom shape, uh, just using a bit more math or any of the existing notes, which is really cool. I'm just going to get rid of this for a second and bring back my gradient texture. And I'll show you one more thing I was playing around with. And uh, I'm going to have to decrease this and change that back to spherical. Maybe 0.8 or something. Uh, that looks good. So another thing I did is I just came to the very front of everything here. And I'm just going to give myself a bit more room to work here. I just added a noise texture and a mix RGB to control that noise texture. Just like this. Um, let's go up a little bit. Yeah, something like this started to look very cool. You know, you had more organic shapes going on here. You could raise this noise texture as well. And it almost looks like a sketchbook pattern. Um, you know, if you're sketching with a pencil or something like that, um, depending on how you set this up, it starts to look pretty neat. If you get too close, it doesn't look quite as good. So maybe increase the scale or, you know, maybe the roughness on the noise texture. Uh, it's pretty neat though, just to experiment with this stuff. Um, you get some pretty interesting effects. Here it is plugged into this color ramp at the end. Okay, that's it for today. Hope you could understand what I was doing. But if you do have any questions, let me know. I'll see what I can do to clear up any confusion you might have. Thanks for watching.